Hello, my friends. Welcome to another mini message. Today, Thursday, we're going to be talking about John chapter 5, from 30 to 47, Witnesses to Jesus. I can do nothing on my own. I judge as, judge as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just, because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. If I were to testify on my own behalf, my testimony would not be valid. But someone else is also testifying about me. And I assure you that everything he says about me is true. In fact, you sent investigators to listen to John the Baptist, and his testimony about me was true. Of course, I have no need of human witnesses, but I say these things so you might be saved. John was like a burning and shining lamp, and you were excited for a while about his message. But I have a greater witness than John, my teachings and my miracles. The Father gave me these works to accomplish, and they prove that he sent me. And the Father who sent me has testified about me himself. You have never heard his voice or seen him face to face, and you do not have his message in your hearts, because you do not believe me, the one he sent to you. You search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me, yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. Your approval means nothing to me, because I know you don't have God's love within you. For I have come to you in my Father's name, and you have rejected me. Yet if others come in their own name, you gladly welcome them. No wonder you can't believe, for you gladly honor each other, but you don't care about the honor that comes from the one who alone is God. Yet it isn't I who will accuse you before the Father. Moses will accuse you. Yes, Moses, in whom you put your hopes. If you really believed Moses, you would believe me because he wrote about me. But since you don't believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? Amen, amen. So this is uh, to be a witnesses of Jesus, right? We are um, Jesus witnesses. We are not anymore Jehovah witnesses, right? <laughs> we, are, we are now living in the old covenant. This, through Jesus, it's a new covenant, right? Uh, we knew God as Jehovah. Now we know him as a Jesus. Because <laughs> reading the Word of God, reading the whole Bible, we know that Jesus is showing us the Father, right? Because he's in the Father. And the Father and him are only one, right? Jesus is God, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus is our Father, as we know, reading the whole Bible. That's what says it's so beautiful to understand who God is, how to follow Him, right? What He wants from us, what is His will, right? So these people, they're still stuck in, all their, in the Old Covenant, in the law, in the, all the stuff, right? They're, they're not going to make it. They're, because they're denying Jesus at these religious people. He says, if you, He says, I'm not condemning you. You're not receiving me. You're receiving, God sent me and you're not receiving me. If you believe Moses, you believe the law, you will know about me because Moses talks about me. But you don't even believe Moses. Because they say they're religious. They say they know, they know the law. They are descendants of Abraham, but they don't do what they said to do. Right? They didn't, they didn't, they didn't uh, obey. They didn't believe in the promises that God says he's going to send the Messiah and who, 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 who was going to be. The way he was going to be. They didn't want that. They want other Messiah. They want all, all the, in a different way. Right? Because God himself says, I'm not going to be your judge. Moses is going to be your judge. The law that you, you say that you follow, but you are not, there's going to be the one that's going to condemn you because you're not follow the, you know, you're not fulfilling the law. Because nobody could. That's what Jesus fulfilled the law. Now, the new covenant is through Jesus to receive the word of God that the, these religious people didn't receive. He said, because you don't believe in Moses. Right? Because if you believe in Moses, you wouldn't believe in me because he talks about me. Right? Right? It says, uh, because you don't believe in the things that he wrote down, all the laws. Right? So if you don't believe Moses, how are you going to believe me? He says, right? Mm -hmm. Because God is not in you. God, God's love. Right? God's his mercy. And if they have God in their lives, they wouldn't receive, they will receive a Jesus because that's God himself becoming a flesh. Right? That's what Jesus is telling you. don't understand me. You don't, you don't believe in me because you don't believe in Moses. Right? They say, you are from Moses. You are, you are the religious people. But God himself, for you and I, is telling us, not because you tell you are Christian, that you, you, are a, a, you believe in Jesus. Right? You want to go to heaven. No. It's your testimony. It's what you're doing. Are you doing his will? Because he's your Lord and Savior. Lord is, means that everything he said you're doing. And Jesus says, only the ones that do the will of the Father will go to heaven. Are you doing the will of the Father, right? 
let's not be like these religious people oh we are christians but we're not doing what he's telling us to do to love our enemies to weigh the authorities to do things to that's why it's so beautiful reading the whole bible to understand what god wants from you <coughs> not what what the world wants or how the world wants to make it fix it uh the way they want us to follow god it's the way the world god wants us to follow him through jesus through the word of god right amen Hey, man, you want to something? Yeah, well, it's always mind-blowing to me that we can have God's approval. You always think mm-hmm. it's this unattainable goal, but so many times when we read through the scriptures, there's people that God's approve, approving of. Mm-hmm. He calls them their friends, and, and we know they're we're all sinners. It's not like any of them are perfect or live perfect lives. But here in verse 35, when he says, John was like a burning and shining lamp. Mm-hmm. I think, wow, what a compliment. If God calls you a burning and shining lamp, you know you did something right. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's, that's just a, a reminder for me. Like, well, what do you, are those words that would be true of my life? Am I a burning and shining lamp? And, you know, maybe I could turn it up a couple notches. So I just think it's cool when we have um, evidence that God is, uh, approves of us, of our lives. We can be witnesses mm-hmm. of Jesus. We can do it right. And then also verse 39, this one to me is so powerful. It just goes to show that you could spend your whole life reading the Bible and completely miss the point. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand that the scriptures are to reveal Jesus Christ to us, the Old Testament included. Um, We can read and read and study and peer and I don't care if we could break down the original language and all the different pretenses and uh, all of the things that we can get into grammatically. We can completely miss the point. Mm-hmm. And right here it says you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me. This is Jesus mm-hmm. speaking, mm-hmm. red letter. Yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. People will go to any number of things. They go to religion. They go to mass. They go to Ash Wednesday. They go to Jehovah Witness. They go to Mormon. They go to the temple. They go to all kinds of trouble. In the name of trying to get to God, they search and they peer and they study and they go to college, they get degrees, and yet they refuse to just come and bend their knee to Jesus. It is the, he's the only way to the Father. There is no other way. It is not about religion. It is about a relationship with Jesus. It's almost so simple, you can miss it. Mm-hmm. So we don't need to study and become collegiate, you know, uh, professors of the Bible. We just need to come with a humble heart. Yes, read the Bible. He tells us to do that. We need to read. We need to eat the Word of God every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. But the most important thing that we do is come with a heart that's ready to receive. That's why he sent John the Baptist to prepare the road, prepare people's hearts for the Messiah, for his coming. Before we read the Word, we need to prepare our hearts. No matter what it's going to say, we need to come ready to receive what it is that he's going to tell us. Because it says if we seek, we will find. If mm-hmm. we come to the word of God, no matter what religion we're in right now, and we say, God, I want to know, what is you really trying to, you're trying to tell me here? He will show you. Mm-hmm. And then you have a choice of whether or not you will be a listener, a doer of his word, or if you're just going to hear it. Mm-hmm. So I pray that you will read the scriptures. And listen to what he's saying and realize that all of it points to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, my friends, let's not be religious like Mm -hmm. these guys. Because this this message is for you and me. Mm -hmm. Right? These people were religious. They they say they knew about the word God, but they they didn't. God God didn't recognize it, right? So let's not be like that. God doesn't know you, right? We need Mm -hmm. to get to know God. We need to come to the word of God, to the Bible. Jesus is telling them like like that, right? He says, uh, uh, you never hear uh, God, uh, the Father's voice, right? You never can see his, uh, his, the way he is, right? You don't have his word living in yourself, in their, in their lives, right? Because, uh, because to the one that he sent, you, you don't believe, mm-hmm. right? He's talking to you and me, mm-hmm. right? He says, you don't have the word of God living in you. Let's not be like these religious people that think they know about God. But you, because somebody taught him or they went, like my wife said, to school or whatever, but God wants you to own relationship, you and the Father, through Jesus, the Word of God. We need to have the Word of God living in us, he says. And he's telling to these religious people, you don't have the Word of God living in you. Because that's how you hear the voice of God. You never hear the voice of God. You don't know who he is. But to you and me, that we read the Word of God, he re- reveals his mysteries. We know God here. 
you know? Mm -hmm. We know who he is, right? Mm -hmm. And he lives in us, right? He said, go deep in the word of God because the eternal lives are there. Because then the word of God is going to live on you. And God, you're going to have eternal life, right? And, uh, and he said, you don't want to come to me because you don't want to have life. We do want to have life. Let's come to the word of God. If you're not going, you're not coming to the Bible, you won't have life. The, God gonna, is not going to empower you with his spirit because you're far away. God said, come close to me and I won't come close to you. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that all Let's together. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. God bless Bye. you. Bye.